Hi folks, hope you are okay today. It's good to be with you. We're having a message on God cares for you in your pain. And the passage that we're looking at today is John chapter 11. So if you'd like to turn your Bible to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you today and we confess our failure. And Lord, we confess our sin. And Lord, we acknowledge our weakness. And we acknowledge our failure. We acknowledge, Lord, that we need you. And so God, we pray for forgiveness today. And we pray for cleansing. And Father God, we pray for your mercy and grace. And we acknowledge our sin today. We acknowledge our need of you. And God, we confess all failure and sin. And Father God, I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that you bless this message to our hearts. And that those who need comfort today would be comforted through these words. I ask this Lord in your name and for your glory. Amen. Okay, we're looking at John uh, chapter 11, the death of Lazarus. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with anointment and wiped his feet with her hair. His brother, brother, his brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters went to, to him saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and are you going there again? And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant talking rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. So Thomas called the twin, and to his fellow disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. And Mary said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the next day, last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whosoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And anyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she had said this, we, she sent and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had him met him. And when the Jews who were with him, with her in the house consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and got out, they followed her supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. <coughs> and Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of, the, some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man uh, from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone <coughs> lay against it. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be a, an order for he has been dead four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you? that if you believe you would see the glory of God. <coughs> Excuse me. So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I, th I knew that you always hear me. But I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen and his face wrapped in cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. I'll just pray again. Father, we just confess our need of you today. And Lord, we don't deserve you. And God, I pray that this message will be a blessing to any who hear it, and that you administer to it to their hearts by your Holy Spirit. Blessed abundantly, Lord, for your glory. Amen. There isn't any hope without God. Voltaire, a French philosopher and critic, who thought Christianity was going to die out, said this, I must die abandoned of God and of men. Charles the ninth, King of France, died in 1574, before he died, he said, What shall I do? I am lost. I see it well. William Pope, a noted atheist and philosopher from Bolton, Lancashire, just before he died, wrote, All the hell, the torment, the fire that I feel within me, O eternity, too, for, too, too wet to dwell forever with devils and damned spirits in the burning lake on the burning flame of hell, the pain of it I feel. So that, that, those are skeptics, and skepticism brings you no hope when you come to death, when you come to pain. But as Christians, we know hope. Uh, Ian Blakelock lost his wife. He says, he, he, he lost his wife, and he said, what mercy can I find in in my utter loneliness, non, non. And he was a Christian and he struggled because he'd lost his wife, but in the midst of that struggle, he did know the comfort of God in that pain eventually. In John chapter 11, we see a family ripped apart by bereavement, and the Lord Jesus Christ comes to mend that heart. John MacArthur says the resurrection of Lazarus is the climatic and most dramatic sign in the gospel and the cornerstone of Jesus public ministry here we see a declaration of who Jesus is we see a declaration of his greatness and his love towards us whenever we feel there is no hope whenever we feel that there is no way forward we can always look to Christ and he's with us and he'll help us Let's turn to Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. Colossians uh, chapter 2 verse 9. We read, For in him and the whole fullness of the deity dwells bodily. In Christ is the fullness of God. And if we trust in Christ, we have God with us. First of all, the Lord has our times in, in his hands. You know, if you've ever had a, a situation where 
you've been delayed to see someone or they've been delayed to see you. It can be a very frustrating experience. Sometimes we can feel that God has delayed, that he's allowed us to go through tremendous suffering or struggle, and we, we just wonder why God's allowed that. But we need to know that these situations are in God's hands. The times are in his hands. If you turn to John chapter 11, verse 3, we see that, that he's sick. Whom you love is ill. In verse 6 of chapter 11, so when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. So uh, Lazarus is sick, yeah? And yet the Lord hears about this, but yet he stays two more days where he is. And then verse 21, chapter 11, verse 21, we read, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. So it seems as if the Lord's timing was not right. But it was all in God's timing. God had the right timing for a situation. To display his glory. And so we must believe that. God is in control. And he wants the best for us. Psalm 23 verse 3 and 4 says. He guides. He guides us. In the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff they comfort me. We have to trust. That God knows the right way. That the times are in his hands. God holds everything in his hands. He knows the right time for you in your life. So you might feel that you've been waiting. But that waiting will, will mean that God will be in it. And show you the meaning of it. And help you. Secondly, the Lord loves us in our grief. This family... In chapter 11, Mary and Martha were grieving. They were grieving. They were grieving. But, see, as Spurgeon writes, love must feed on love. The very soul and life of our love for God is this, is his love for us. In the midst of our grief, God loves us. We see that in verse 3. John 11 verse 3 whom you love is ill so people knew that Jesus loved Lazarus then if you turn to John 11 32 we read now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him she fell at his feet and saying Lord if you had been here my brother would not have been uh, died when Jesus saw her weeping and and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. The Lord was deeply troubled, moved by the, by the pain of this family and the people. Verse 35, Jesus wept. But he didn't also weep. Verse 38, and Jesus deeply moved again, came to the tomb. So he's deeply we he's weeping, but he's also moved. But then he helps. He brings Lazarus to life. Verse 43. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. So this is real love. It's love that cares, but love that's in action. That's what the love of God is for us. Every true Christian, says J.C. Ryle, has a friend in heaven. Of almighty power and boundless love, he is thought of, cared for, provided for, defended by God's eternal Son. Let's turn to 1 John chapter 4 verse 19. 1 John chapter 4 verse 19. 1 John chapter 4 verse 19. We read these words. We love because he first loved us. He first loved us. If you feel you're in a situation where God is not there, where you feel grief, 
where you feel utter darkness, upper utter hopelessness, you need to know that God loves you, he's deeply moved and he will take action. Okay? He'll take action. He'll take action. He knows what you're going through. He knows it. He knows it thoroughly. Let's look at Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10 verse 38. Luke chapter 10 verse 38. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village and a woman named Martha welcomed him in her house. And she said to her sister, called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching, but Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen a good portion, which will not be taken away from her. You see, Mary and Martha, Martha was full of anxiety Mary sat at Jesus feet and listened to him and she knew that he cared he knows you individually he knows you're being distracted he knows you're anxious he knows your hurts he knows your pains he knows you intimately and he knows what's troubling you and he will answer your prayer he will come and meet your need you might think well he's, he's taken a long time does he really care yes he cares you might feel that you've been defeated in a particular area of your life. You might feel that God has been delaying and not come to help you. But you need to know that he loves you and he knows you personally. And he wants to relieve you of your pain. Um, and he will, in his way, you have to give him a chance to show him his great love to you. Um, I'm not saying that God will heal you. He does heal. God can heal miraculously. But what I'm saying is you will know God's help. In some way, God will come alongside and relieve you of your pain. It might be you have to suffer physical illness, but God gives you joy. But either way, you will be relieved. God will give you help. He will give you peace. He will help you because he cares for you. And then finally, the Lord has power over death. It's one thing to care, but it's another thing to show that you can do something. And God said about Lazarus, Jesus said to Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. If you turn to John 11, verse 40 to 44, we read, So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I say this on account of the people standing around that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. So our Lord he brings Lazarus back to life. Where there was death, where there was no hope, there was supernatural blessing. God brought healing. One gospel minister who was dying said, My dear, I have preached many times on heaven, but I never dreamed of a heaven so beautiful as the one I now behold. This is a man who was about to die and sees heaven. In other words, what I'm saying is God has the power over death. Any death, whether it be a physical death in your life, or whatever death, if something's died, a marriage has died, a ministry has died, your career has died, whatever has died, your dreams have died, Christ can resurrect them. He has the power to do so. And if you look to him, you will behold spiritual riches and strength that you never dreamed of. So we, we, we will conquer death eventually as well. Always remember, uh, if we turn to Philippians chapter 1, 23. Philippians 1, 23. It says, 
I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. Paul knows that Christ conquered death, and he wants to be with Christ. If you turn to 1 Corinthians 15, One Corinthians fifteen One Corinthians fifteen One Corinthians fifteen thirty five But someone will ask, How are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? You foolish person. What you saw does not come to life unless it dies and what you sow is not the body that is to be but a bare kernel perhaps of wheat or of some other grain but God gives it a body as he has chosen and to each kind of seed its own body for not all flesh is the same but there is one kind of human another for animals another for birds another for fish there are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies but the glory of the heavenly is of one kind and the glory of the earthly is another there is one glory for the sun, another glory for the moon, another glory for the stars, differ from the stars in glory. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown in imperishable, what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. Do you get that? You see, when you die, you will rise again in glory. Christ conquered death. When God conquered, when Jesus conquered Lazarus's death, when Jesus brought Lazarus to to life, he was showing that he was king over death, and he showed king over death when he died on a cross and rose again. And if we turn to him, we will know peace, and we will know help in the time of death. We will know that we will be resurrected to be with him. Isn't that amazing? Now you might feel, in conclusion, that things are too complex for you. You might feel that the pain's too difficult for you. You might not fully understand Jesus. You might not fully understand your situation. But in John chapter 11, the central person was Jesus. He's the one that made a difference. D.L. Moody said, Heaven, heaven, earth recedes, heaven opens before me. No, this is no dream. It is beautiful. It is this death. It is sweet. God is calling me. I must go. When D.M. Moody was about to die, he was an evangelist. He felt the glories of heaven, that God was with him. And my message to you today is in your pain, God is with you. He cares for you. And if we turn to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians 3.10 That I may know him in the power of his resurrection. I may share his sufferings becoming like him in his death. Paul was consumed with Christ. And right now what you need to do is be consumed with Christ. In the death that you have faced, whether it be the death of a family, whether it be a death of a career or a death of a dream or a death of a marriage, but some spiritual dark thing has happened to you. In the midst of that, you feel that God has abandoned you and his timing is rubbish. You need to know that God's timing is perfect and he is coming to help you. In the midst of this suffering and death, you feel that God doesn't love you. You need to know that God knows you intimately. He knows exactly what you're suffering and he'll relieve you. But also you need to know that God is not a lame God. God is a mighty, powerful God. And any situation that you come against, you can be victorious in the power of Christ. And all these things means that we have to make Christ the center if we're going to know the care of God in our pain. So I hope I hope that was a blessing to you.
and uh, we're going to close it for right now. So let's close in prayer. Father God, I, I just come before you today and Lord, I just pray this message would be a blessing to many, many people. And Father, I pray that it would be an encouragement to them and a help to them and a comfort to them. And that Father, they would know your love and grace and care. So God, I ask that you would forgive us all our sins and that you would refresh us and renew us. And that Lord Jesus Christ, that you would bless us and that you would help us to walk your way. Be a comfort to those, Father, who need your comfort today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for listening, and uh, I hope this message has been a blessing to you. God bless.